What's up, drumheads? I've been playing on these new sticks recently. Vicfirth AJ2. It's the same diameter as a 5A, but there's just something about the taper that just makes it feel good. <laughs> Uh, nothing! I'm just taking some samples! I think that deserves a sub. Why should you learn to read drum notation? You're not playing in a big band or a jazz orchestra. You just want to freaking jam, right? Well, in this video, I want to give you a crash course on basic drum notation. And we'll leave out all that stupid crap that nobody cares about. Hey! Hey! Pianissimo. It means to play quietly. Okay, can we up the volume now? Checking, checking, thank you. Checking, checking, thank you. Checking, check. Stop! And repeats, okay? And repeats. Who's editing this? Learning drum notation is essentially like learning how to read and write in your native language. Think about this, by the time you turn four, you know how to say some words, maybe say some complete sentences, and then you go to school, you learn to read and write. And then once you break that barrier of reading and writing, then you can learn everything else in school. Over time, your brain learns and adapts, and you don't have to think about spelling or reading anymore. If I say the word dog, immediately you know how to spell it in your head. Or vice versa. When asked to spell a complex word, we often visualize it in our heads before writing it down. So you don't want to be that ninth grader at school who doesn't know how to read or write, do you? Keep up. Keep pop anonymous? Damn you! Basically, the point I'm trying to make is that once you learn how to read and write drum notation, you'll see a huge step in progression because your ability to learn and absorb information has now been expanded. You can now learn not just with your ears, but with your eyes too. And just like the language you speak, you'll eventually be able to see those words, those notations, kind of floating around in your head. I am definitely not a master reader. Like, I can't sight read complex charts on the spot, but give me a sec and I'll get there. Like reading at a second grade level. Today, Junior! So take this video for what it is. I know it says drum notation for dummies, but I'm gonna try and give you quite a bit of information in a short amount of time. But please pause, rewind, and take the time to understand this because it is very beneficial. I need like a whiteboard. Okay, here we have a staff. It's a set of five horizontal lines and four spaces. Can't forget about the spaces. Now for most instruments, these lines and spaces represent musical pitch. But in the case of drums and percussion, we use these lines and spaces to represent which drum or cymbal we're hitting. Hi hat, snare, tom one, two, three. What else? Crash, ride, ride bell. This is the best example I've seen of a way to visualize where the drum notes lie on the staff. You'll notice they almost fall in line with the physical height of the drum. Kick down low, cymbals up high. It's good to know all of this, but. I basically only use kick snare hat when charting. Maybe to write down grooves for my gig cheat sheets, or even to figure out like complex grooves I've heard other people play. Okay. We now have a beginning and end to that staff. We can now call it a full measure or bar. But what the frick are those weird symbols at the beginning? This? This is a percussion clef. Just like a treble clef. Or a bass clef. Same deal. Now this beloved fraction, this is our time signature. 90% of the time, it will say 4-4. Sometimes, it will say C for common time, which is also 4-4. Magic. If it says 5-4, count to 5. If it says 5-8, count to 5 twice as fast. We'll get deeper into time signature later. Alrighty class, so today, we're going to talk about Note value. Here we have our bar or measure in 4-4 four four with our five staff lines. Right, Brandon? Brandon. Yeah. What did I say about the text thing? All right. Come on, we're making the video. So if I have a whole bar and I take one note that takes up that whole bar, what do you think that note's called? 
A whole no. Okay? A whole no. Whole no. That's okay. Let's try another. If we now have a note that takes up half the bar, half the bar, what would that note be called? Think about it. Half the bar. Half the bar note? Close, okay? We would leave out the bar. Half note. But I like the bar. Brandon? <sighs> okay, let's keep going, okay? I think you're gonna get this one. If we have a note that takes third note... Well... No. You're on the right track, but no. Now that you barely understand note value, let's go back to time signature. So the top number is the number we count to, the bottom number is the subdivision. So a bar of 4-4 four, four is equal to 4 quarter notes. What about a bar of 5-8? Five, 5-8 eight? Five eighth notes. Okay. Okay. 7-16. Seven 7-16th sixteen. Seven notes. Okay, Jazz Ensemble, we got a bar of 11-32. Eleven thirty second notes. I get it. So most metronomes typically play at a quarter note pulse. When quarter notes are placed in a bar in a sequence, it looks like this. Eighth notes look like this, and they have one tail. When multiple eighth notes are played together, they can be connected with one line. Sixteenth notes have two tails. Just like with eighth notes, when strung together, those tails make two lines. And you got it. Thirty second notes, three lines. So when I'm playing grooves, I'm often thinking about what that top row looks like. What's my hi-hat doing? Am I playing quarter notes? This is literally what I'm picturing in my head when I'm playing. This is that visualizing I was talking about earlier. Dog. So let's visualize the kick drum, okay? If I'm listening to the bass player and he's going, he's talking to me. He's talking to me in bass language right now. And bass language is a brother language of drum language. He's telling me, yo, check this. So I listen and because I can read and visualize, I can think about, okay, Where's he placing these notes? Where's he accenting? What's he saying? One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, one, and two. People often write out drum notation differently, but the general idea is the same. This is the exact same beat, but just written in different formats. This can often scare people. But for me, this is why I love graph paper. It makes understanding basic charting very easy. You got the hi-hat on the top, snare in the middle, and the kick drum on the bottom. Each square represents a 16th note, or whatever subdivision you want, and you're freaking off. Now lastly, it's important to note that there are many other note values, okay? We have dotted notes. If you see a little period after a note, this basically means you add half of that note value to itself. So a dotted quarter note will be the equivalent of a quarter note and an eighth note. And this also brings us into the world of like triplets. Often above a group of three eighth notes, you'll see a little three. This means three notes per quarter note. Or you'll see six, which means six tuplets. There can also be five, you can even do seven. It gets nuts, man. And this is where I'm gonna stop because of course, like with anything, we can dive deeper and deeper, but I feel like I've already lost some of you. I just wanted this video to hopefully show you guys that reading drum notation is not really that difficult. And if you just take the time to learn the fundamentals, then it can drastically change the way you learn and play on the drums. I think the common misconception about learning to read is that Oh, it must be formal and these are the rules and you must learn this and that. But I encourage you guys to just try and learn what you feel is necessary for yourself. 
and maybe even create your own shorthand of writing drum notation in a way that you understand. Because it's not for anyone else, it's for you to learn, and it's for you to grow as a musician. Thanks for watching. Don't